In the DC multiverse, there are many powerful beings, from the mighty Superman to the diabolical Darkseid. However, there is one being that reigns supreme over all, the Presence. Most commonly known as the supreme being of DC, the Presence is omnipotent and omniscient, with powers and abilities that place it incomprehensibly above all other beings in the DC multiverse. There is no known reference to the creation or birth of the Presence due to the fact that it is an infinite and all-knowing force that predates all concepts including time and space. In fact, the Presence is the being responsible for creating time and space, as well as all things in the DC multiverse. The closest reference to the creation of the Presence comes from its own words, in which it mentions being a product of outside forces. The prevailing theory at this point is that the Presence is referring to the actual writers of DC Comics, and that it has always existed. As the supreme being of its multiverse, the Presence possesses full control over every feasible part of reality, but reveals that instead of lording over its creations like a jealous king, the Presence chooses to instead allow all sentient beings to choose their own actions and reap the consequences as they come. Though it has chosen to allow free will, the Presence has stepped in and used its godlike powers in certain situations in response to the desires of lesser beings. The Presence also directly created immortal and near-omnipotent beings such as Lucifer Morningstar and Michael Demiurgos, who are considered at least equally as powerful as the Spectre and his granddaughter Elaine Bellick, who would eventually take his place as caretaker of his creations. On one occasion, Detective Jim Corrigan, who was possessed by the curse of the Spectre, wanted to marry the woman he loved, but was hesitant due to his spectral condition, and decided to cut ties with her to keep her safe from his enemies. That night, Corrigan pondered his existence and wished that he could be free from his curse. His pleas ended up reaching the Voice, one of the Presence's forms. As Corrigan slept that night, the Voice stripped the curse from Corrigan, freeing him from the Spectre and allowing him to marry his true love. As he later prepared for his wedding, the detective was tipped off on how to find a gang that he had been trying to arrest, but he was ultimately ambushed and killed by them. After his funeral that night, the Presence summoned his spirit into the heavens, where it decided his mission in the mortal world wasn't finished. The Presence returned him to life and bestowed him with the powers of the Spectre once again before returning him to Earth. As previously stated, the Presence chooses not to intervene in the affairs of mortals in most cases, allowing them to make their choices for themselves and reap the consequences. One such example is the eventual fate of the heroes Hawkman and Hawkgirl. After allowing all of their past incarnations to be ripped from them by the Lord Beyond the Void, the pair watched as their eternal enemy crumbled into dust and faded away, as he was overwhelmed by the sheer amount of life energy forced on him as their innumerable lives overpowered him. Following this, they died soon after their life energy was spent and found themselves together in the afterlife. They hear the voice, who shows them a field of skulls which they are told represents the legions of innocence that Hawkman had sacrificed to the Lord Beyond the Void before dedicating himself to opposing his former Lord. The voice told Hawkman that this was the weight of the debt that he owed, but afterwards the skulls began to disappear in smoke as the voice tells him that while his sins were great by giving his life to atone for his crimes, that he would finally be able to pass into the afterlife and be at peace. Hawkgirl, who had previously been the Herald of the Heavens, was told that she would once again be able to represent the Heavens. However, this would separate the two lovers, and sensing their hesitation, the voice tells them that they could be reincarnated one last time, and that in this last life they would live much longer than previous lives, but that they would eventually both die. Choosing love over her old position, Hawkgirl agreed, and the pair was reincarnated as Hawkman and Hawkgirl one last time. In spite of its acts of apparent good and mercy, the Presence has shown that it doesn't fully understand the actions and choices of other beings at times due to it being all-knowing and all-powerful. This leads it to often make decisions or comments that seem cruel and only make sense to the all-knowing deity. In one instance, the multiverse is caught in a conflict between his granddaughter Elaine and the powerful mother of demons, Lilith. Wanting to learn more about how lesser beings would perceive situations to better understand them, the Presence offers them two choices, holding aloft a glowing sphere that he tells them is the eternity of the multiverse, and in the other hand, a bloody dagger. He offers them two choices, the complete healing of the multiverse or the utter destruction of it. When asked to plead her case, the demon Lilith argues that the very notion of any being holding the entirety of creation in its hand is a cruel fate, and that the only possible option is to release his creations from the horrors of life through a painless destruction.
When asked for a rebuttal, Elaine refuses to argue back, furious that the Presence can speak so rationally about taking the lives of so many people. The Presence tells her that it wouldn't be killing anyone, but erasing them from the beginning of time so that they never existed. Elaine argues that removing everything also removes every possibility of something, which makes the Presence's plan inherently wrong. She goes so far as to say that if the Presence decides to end everything, she will fight it until she is dead. Eventually, the Presence suggests a third option, to step back and truly allow things to fall as they will, separate from its influence and will. It chooses to do so and names Elaine as the new creator and focal point of the multiverse, disregarding Lilith's voice of disagreement. While granting god-level powers and abilities is a remarkable feat itself, the ability to effortlessly take those powers, and to give and take life itself from any being in existence as well as bestowing the entirety of its own power and multiverse to another, shows just how immensely powerful the Presence is. There is truly no other being that comes close to matching it in the DC Multiverse.